<laughs> so if you're joining on this call, this is our strategy calls on a Friday. And for all of January, what we're doing is we're going through and just learning a few steps, some strategic steps on how to take ourselves online. So I'm I've just got my eye on the door. Um, can I, Zosh, can I make you the co-host as well? And you can be the, the door person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can also share my screen at the same time. I'm glad you all could make it. Um, this session today is actually quite exciting. When I found out this information, I thought I just want to share it with all of you because this for me really helped to crack the code on <clears throat> why it's so important for us to take our businesses online and kind of how we piece it all together as well. So I'm just trying to find a couple of keys here. Uh, Zosha, there we are, co-host you. And I'm gonna share my screen, everybody. And here we are. Can everybody see that? Yeah, I'll just make it full screen. Great. Now, these Friday calls are really, what's the word? Um, we all share. That's the word I'm looking for. My English brain is not working at the moment. It's early here in Hanoi. But please jump in and share your thoughts. Um, please don't keep yourself muted all the time. Jump in. Chat if you want to. It's a bit hard for me to see the chat window. So um, if there's anything that we need to talk about, just let's pause and talk about it. Pop your hand up. Hit the pretty button that raises your hand or do whatever you need to. Um, but today, what we want to talk about is what we call the value ladder. And I'll explain it in a graphic in a minute. So last week we went through, <coughs> excuse me, I have this Hanoi hack at the moment. The pollution here is horrendous. So gargling lots of on guard at the moment and trying to get it out. So last week we talked about the secret formula number two. And what it really is, is how to take your story and identify <coughs> your story. So who are you as a character? <coughs> Sorry, we talked about... One moment, sorry, I'm just gonna mute for a second. And back with you. So we talked last week about your story and your attractive character. What is the character that you bring to yourself online? And so we talked about giving a backstory and, and talking in little parables, like little, <clears throat> little stories that will hook in people's brains. We also talked about being really authentic and talking about our flaws and that, I think I know personally it takes courage. It takes confidence to actually lean into that and expose that with everybody. Yeah. So we talked about the importance of character flaws. And we also talked about the importance of polarizing people too, not in a negative way, but having an opinion about something. Yeah. <clears throat> so the next thing we talked about was identifying your type of character. And we said that there were probably four types. There was a leader. Um, adventurer, the reporter, and the reluctant hero. Now, if you're sitting on this call or you're watching the call and you didn't see last week's call, just go back and look at the link because we went through all of these, these tips last week. So this is just a little review. And then the last section we talked about was just identifying your character in a storyline. So what type of story do you want to tell your people through all of your online presence. Is it a loss and redemption? Um, so I had all of this, then I lost it, then I got it all back again. Um, is it an us versus them kind of story? What we use a lot in doTERRA is the before and after, that, that transformation, yeah? So we, we talk about that a lot, how we can show people that we've walked the same journey, we've been on the same path, and we want to hold their hand and we want to guide them from where they are, let them identify where the gap is um, and where they want to get to and then take them there because you've done that and through your storytelling you can tell them that so that's the attractive character storyline is that before and after um, next is an amazing discovery so you found something and you just want to tell everybody about that um, and then we also have the secret telling so you're just dying to tell somebody about a secret that you found out um, and the last is the third person testimonial, which, are, you know, we use a lot as well in, in doTERRA. So, and they're quite powerful too. To, you're showing people through your testimony, your personal testimonial, your journey. But when they hear it from somebody else as well, it even makes it more powerful. And that's why you always see on landing pages, you always see some, some testimonials there. So that was the review from last week. 
Can we dive on into this week? Yes. Yes. Good, good. Um, so this is what we're going to cover today is the value ladder. And the, the value ladder, if we just break it down, it's basically a ladder. And we'll go through a diagram in a moment. When I saw this, it really started to make a lot of sense to strategically put your vision together. And when you start to even contemplate taking your, your presence online, like a lot of us are in social media already, yeah? But what we're talking about here is more building your website. And it's, I think we saw last year the importance of having a hub, this, this hub which is yours and that you control. Because at any moment, social media can lock you out and it's happened to a few of us and then you lose control of your business. So when you have a central hub and these uh, calls on, on a, a Friday or a Thursday night are not about a platform, but we're more talking about having uh, a strategy and a presence, yeah? And so we'll show the diagram on the next page, but the value ladder is mapping out what are you going to give people? Yeah, the value. So on the axis, if you have a look at the axis, along the bottom is the value and up the side is the dollar, the dollar value. So take a screenshot of any of these you want. Um, we also put the slide deck into the link. So if I read through this, implementing a give to get and a give to get means you give them something and then you get their email address. Yeah, or you get a connection, a contact for that customer. Once you have their email address, then you own that data. Yeah, so you own it and then you can actually market to that person with a really sexy kind of offer, yeah. So implementing a give to get formula with at least four levels of increasing value. So most of us, when we think about going online, we think social media and, but then we don't take the people anywhere. We don't take them off social media. Maybe you take them to a one-on-one -on -one conversation, yeah? But what happens if that conversation finishes? Do you take them further? Do you put them into a newsletter? If you do, great. That's another level of your value ladder. So we'll talk about this. This slide is a little bit tricky, but we'll start to really break it down. The second line says the actual process to get customers to ascend through the different levels of your value ladder. So we don't just think the first level, like the opt-in with an, with an email, what happens after they've received the email? Where do we take them next? And what I learned is that there's always somebody wanting to learn more and there's always somebody wanting to receive more and pay more. So don't do all the work of attracting your people in and then don't take them anywhere. Yeah. So the idea is to continually give them more value. So once you've got them in the front door, let's really love on them and give them more value and take them somewhere. Yeah. So it takes time. It takes time to uh, understand who is the person that you want to attract, where are they hanging out, how do you bait them, and then bring them in the front door this way. So once you've got them in the front door, this is the, where we're going to take them. So your value ladder is your plan. And it shows how you're going to acquire your customers, you know, how we hook them. Is it sleep? Is it digestion? Is it, is it Reiki? Is it, you know, rehabilitation? Is it, what is it? So that's how we bait them. And where you will make money as your business owner. So where are you going to make money from these people? Are you going to offer them after they've come in the front door? Are you going to then offer them a mini course on Reiki? Are you going to offer them a course on cooking? Are you, where are you going to take them after they're in the front door? So I want today for you just to think a little bit wider than just bringing them in. So where, where is your vision to take them? It doesn't mean you have to build it all straight away. Yeah. So don't think you've got to do it all in the beginning. You just need to have the vision of where you want to take your people and then just concentrate on the front door, just getting them in the front door. Yeah. Um, so that's the first line. Let's jump to the second slide, which is the value ladder. So everything we build inside the value ladder will attract and serve your ideal customer. So, so the language needs to be the same. The, the language needs to be to attract your people in so that when your person is flicking through online, that they stop on your, your post, that they feel like you're talking to them. And then it'll say, click on this to learn more. When they click on that link, 
It'll go into your social media, it'll go into your website. Um, that's when you're hooking them in. Now, the second line here, you can see this one, and then we have an example at the end. This is really putting everything together that we learned in our first week of, of who we are attracting um, and then what we're going to do for this person. So this is, once you get this kind of, uh, what is it, like a statement of who you're going to attract, it really makes it quite easy to then start to write all of your content. Yeah, because you know who you're talking to. So this here, I think, is a, is a terrific slide. So we help who. So that's your ideal customer. So we, we help who to, this is where you insert the result that you want them to achieve through, insert your opportunity. Yeah. So the example here is, I help busy people like you to explore small shifts in your life to increase your energy through the power of essential oils. So just one, you know, example that I just threw up in a second. <laughs> so... You know, it's by no means perfect and is busy people like you too broad? Yeah, it is. And so I'll need to narrow that more so it talks to you more. Yeah. But I just wanted to give you one example. So we help who? So that's your avatar. That's your ideal customer. And then you insert uh, the result. Because that's what people are looking for. They're not looking for the product. They're looking for the result. They're looking for the pain point that they want that solution for. And then how are you going to do it? You know, how are you going to take them on that journey? Yeah. And through your storytelling, you're telling them that you've taken that journey already. So, you know, I had eczema and now I don't have eczema. And then you talk about that story. And, and that's how you do it. Just through that one line there. Makes it sound easy, yeah? <laughs> so it takes a little bit of sitting with it and mapping it out. But that statement is pretty powerful. So dun, 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 here is the value ladder. So um, the axes I've kind of cut off on the big picture, but you can see them on the small picture up the top here. So value increases as they go up the ladder. The price of the offers that you're offering people increases as they continue up the ladder. If we forget about all the others, just look at the, this one here, the top left, yeah? So they come in the front door. This is the front door. So your people are entering through an opt-in. So maybe it's click on this to receive my ebook on sleep. And they're like, oh yeah, I need, I need help on sleep. And so they click on that, the give to get, they give you their email address, and then you give them the ebook. That is usually the first step of uh, uh, the value ladder, getting them in the front door. And it's also usually the last step <laughs> for a lot of people because that's where it finishes. And honestly, for me, about a month ago, I didn't know where to take people. I didn't really know what the next step was. I knew that I needed to give value, but I really didn't know that there was a strategic process and there is. And so generally when people are flicking through the internet, what I've learned is that they're looking for a solution, yeah, straight away. And that's the reason why they stopped on your ad because there's something talking to them. So generally people who come in the front door, they're looking for a solution straight away. That's why generally when you click on an ad and there's all these other pop-ups like buy me, buy me, buy me, add this on, it's because they've got a bleeding neck and they want an answer straight away. And so there is a certain percentage of people, they want to move through your value ladder quite quickly. So they want that second offer quite quickly. So even if it's just you follow up with an email the next day, yeah, and you can automate all this. So you bring them in the front door with a free email book, uh, an ebook on, on sleep. And then you have a drip sequence of maybe five emails over five days. So day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. At the end of day five, they've been through for a week. It's all automated. So you don't even need to think about it. And then on day five, there's an offer for them to go somewhere else in your value ladder. Yeah. So when you first start mapping this out, kind of think about where you want to take them through your journey, but then only concentrate on one or two steps. Because if you concentrate on all of the steps, it's going to overwhelm completely and you won't, won't start.
So if we look at this one down the bottom here, they've actually got the, the value and the, the offers in there. Can we make that bigger? How's that? Yeah, for old eyes. <laughs> Anybody need my glasses? So this one here is talking about entering the value ladder with an opt-in, with a free book. And then it goes to the next level, which is consulting and uh, strategy review. So as you go up the, the value ladder, things become, there's a price put on it. There's a certain amount of people that will pay for the value. Yeah, if you're telling the story. So this is, this person has sat down and mapped out their, their kind of uh, strategy for attracting their people in. And all of us sitting here are selling the same product, but all of us have a different story and different experience and different knowledge. So all of us will have a completely different value ladder, yeah? So I just wanted to put that up as a, as a visual of what the ladder looks like. It's actually a ladder. So on one axis, you have the value. So as they stay longer in your community, you're giving them more value, but you wanna take them somewhere. You don't want them to be on the same level. You actually wanna take them on a journey up because then they actually start to give you money for the value that you're giving them. Do we have any questions so far? No, anybody? I just scanned through the photos. You're all okay? Good, 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 good. So I will post this so you can go back and watch it again um, and the slide deck as well. <clears throat> Let's jump into the next slide. So here are questions. So who is the person that you wanna serve? We always need to keep coming back to this. This needs to be on your vision board. It needs to be somewhere. There needs to be a photograph of this person. We always talk about your, your ideal customer, your avatar, because it's really important. And you can go onto so many different types of websites and um, you can see whether they're talking directly to you or whether it's not, you don't resonate with it. Yeah. Um, and so usually a good website will know who their avatar is. They'll talk directly to that person and you may not be their ideal customer. And that's what they want. They want to talk directly to the right person. So who is the person that you want to serve? Number two is what are the results uh, we can provide for your dream customers? So the results, not the product. What is the result? Yeah. Um, so you don't want to go out there and talk about serenity. You want to talk about their pain point, which is can't sleep. Yeah. And then the tool that you use to get there is essential oils. Yeah. Number three is, um, this is a very long one. What is it that they have been unsuccessfully trying to accomplish before entering your community, your world that you know you can solve when you have a chance to serve them? Yeah, and so this is through your community, your voice, your backstory. So everything we talked about last week. Yeah, um, the number four is, what is your new opportunity that you want them to, uh, hold on, let me see, what's that word? Is it <laughs> order, anybody order? <laughs> order? <laughs> what is your new opportunity that you want to offer them? Yeah, trick question. Um, so the new opportunities, get them in the front door, then take them to the next level. Take them to the next level. What do you want to offer them? What's the next level up? So for me, for example, um, I have an offer like I did on the team call this week. So it's an offer for five um, powerful morning tips. So setting up a morning routine, but I don't talk about the power morning tips. I talk about um, lack of energy, um, feeling stuck, overwhelmed. I'm not even talking about essential oils. It's about, you know, setting up a morning routine. So I want them to click on that. These are people that don't even know me. Um, so I'm just sending it out into the ether and somebody will click on that. They don't know me. They, they, if they don't know me, they won't like me and they won't trust me. And so the idea is then to bring them into my community and warm them up through my value ladder. And so my... The first time they click on my offer, they receive um, five days of emails and they receive an ebook. And at the end of five days, I'm offering them to go into a, a little mini course. Yeah, so that's all I've mapped out in my value ladder. Then by no means am I an expert. Yeah, so I, I'm still learning through, through this as well. And so I'm just taking them to the next level and that's what I wanna offer them. 
next. I just don't want to uh, leave them after the five days. So the last point is, that, um, is that a paid course or a free course um, after it, five days? It, it's a free course as well. So uh, the, the next course is just an intro to essential oils class that I have broken down and made that into a mini course. And I've done a, a video for each section. So I've just taken the, the um, intro to essential oils or oils made easy. And then each section, so I've done an intro video. I have introduced myself. And then I've gone through three cool things about oils. And that's three videos, three ways to use oils. That's three ways. And then after that, I talk about getting online and meeting them face to face if this kind of resonates with them, but it's still a free course. Yeah. And then after that, I'll start to work in more value because these people coming in, I'm advertising. So they don't know me and I want to give them a lot of value at the moment. So if they can see at the front door that there's a stack of value um, and they're thinking, wow, you know, I'm getting all this value. I must be getting a lot of value when I start to pay for a course. So I haven't put together a paid course yet, but what I'm going to do is have a coming soon and people can click on that and then I can see how much interest there is. And then I can start to build it while I have a waiting list. Yeah. We're all okay. Cool. Okay. So let's flick the page. So the value ladder. So after you define what your statement is, so, who do you want to attract and what result do you want to give them? Everything you create will be about moving your people towards your goal. So if it's all about sleep, you'll move them in the front door with sleep. You'll move them to the next level about sleep and, and up your value ladder. Yeah. And every offer you create at each step of your value ladder will help um, to achieve your goal and your voice. Yeah. Don't get so stuck on this year, Zosh. I'm just wondering, like, um, it all should all sort of be in the same vein. So, like, if you start, let's say I pull them in mm. through sleep, then each rung on the ladder should be about sleep or mm. do, you, do you know see what I mean? Like, cause, uh, do you then start to pivot a little bit? I think what, what happens is that um, uh, the answer is no, because you want to give, you want to get them in the front door. You can't sort of go bring them in and sleep and then start talking about taking the wheel off your truck. You know, it needs to be about the same kind of like yeah. wellness, or if you're bringing them in on knitting, you may take them into crochet, you, you know, the yeah. same, same vein. Yeah, so exactly. Like you, you then you maybe just do the habits and then you do, and then you introduce the oils like down the third track or something. Yeah, exactly. so you know, Cause your end result is the oils, particularly in this, this sort of genre. Yeah, your end result is to make money as a business yeah. owner. Um, yeah. And But if you think about all of the influences out there, and we don't want to do any comparison, but they start offering different things and they see a gap in their community um, oh. and then they offer that. And so I can see, I can bring somebody in on sleep, but then this person may want to do business with me later on. And so I will have a value ladder mapped out for business so um it may be a not a completely different value ladder but it may be a rung on the ladder that says at level four i'm going to start talking more about the business um mm. because uh, at that stage they may be you know showing more interest they may jump really quickly to that level somebody else may not even get there so you may have even at the first rung of your ladder you may have five different opt-ins, one for sleep, one for business, one for... So you don't have to have multiple ladders, but you can have multiple steps on each ladder, like as in different different funnels on your value ladder, yeah? So the idea of the value ladder is that you want to make money from your business. And if you're only offering free things all the time, then you're giving away all of your knowledge. And you're showing up as an expert in your field and you're showing up um, with confidence, with a story, uh, with knowledge and experience. And you want to take people on a journey with you. So the mm -hmm. whole idea of a value ladder is that you're creating community through your voice and you're taking them on a journey. And 
I just want to show you the visual that you're ascending the ladder. Your community doesn't just go across and flat. And if it's flat, then you're not taking them anywhere like up, uh, up as in money, up as in value. That's really what I want you to take away today is that visual of as long as they stay in your community, you're getting more money from them because you're offering them a little mini course. And then they go, wow, I'm getting so much value. I got so much out of that. I'm going to take the next thing Pete offers because I really enjoyed what I got last time. So you've got to offer value for money as well. Otherwise, you won't be able to sell it. Um, I, yeah, exactly. I mean, my, my experience is if you offer too much for free, they actually don't value it. Yeah, they sure. don't sort of respect you. And if you sort of give them a enough bait, yeah. people go, oh, there's more. It's like, yeah, 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 there's so much more. Yeah, exactly. And it's, I guess it's confidence, isn't it? Knowing where to, to cut off the freebies and having confidence mm -hmm. in yourself to go, you know what? There is value in what I'm offering. And, and I think a great way is to interview people. Um, you know, interview people about what do you think my skill is? Um, uh, am I adding value to, to your life? And, and you can see by the people around you, the type of people that you're already attracting. You know, there's already people drawn to you. So have confidence in the fact that you have a story and, and that you can take people through this journey. What we talked about last week, that, that backstory of taking people somewhere with you. So um, I don't want to confuse people with too many words, but that, that vision is important and, and having a, a, a vision of where you want to take people. So it's easy to get people in the front door, but then what do you do with them? Where do you take them? How do you continually nurture those people and, and, and pour some love into those people? Ali, I can see your hand. Yes, I have a question. <laughs> um, okay, so each, each one of us has a team. And, yeah. right, so a doTERRA team. Are you imagining creating courses that has your existing doTERRA team buying? Or are you imagining these paid courses somewhere on a lower rung before somebody joins the team? Hmm. Or are you considering this value ladder to be something completely not related to your doTERRA team? Yeah, wow, so great. Um, I think the answer is yes, yes, and yes. Um, without getting overwhelmed, overwhelmed, and overwhelmed. So choosing one of those, you can use your um, your online marketing presence to market to your existing people, uh, say as in a um, like a membership section. So you can have a, when you join Nourished by Pete, you can log into this and then you get all of this information, like a hub of information, all of those like FAQs and everything that you have to answer like a thousand times a week. It's all in a login membership section. So that or you know, we have we have fifty pre-recorded classes. Yeah, exactly. You just dump them no. in there every time you do them. It's a hub of information. And we already have that, don't we, Ali? Like in, in many different little ways, um, on Absolutely. Adobe Spark. You've already got that. And so you've already started building your value ladder. A lot of us have that already. And it's just structuring it in your brain and seeing it visually. So one, yes, uh, mapping out and marketing to your existing community, giving them more value so that they feel loved and supported. Um, and that's the big part of what we do, isn't it? In the pipes, the S is continually supporting. So you can support your people through the pipes with the value ladder. The second way and how I see um, where I'm marketing in, in my online presence is new people. I want new people to get to know me because I have my circle of influence how do I grow that bigger now? And I do that through social media marketing or online presence. So I want to attract people that don't know me, that don't know Pete. And I want them to get to know me and like me and trust me through the value that I can add. So that was the second way. And then the, the third way, what was the third way, Ali? Um, well, it was, it was, new people. Yeah, so those new people, would you expect to offer to have them pay you for a mini course or pay you for something 
before they go and kind of become a member. And then once they're a member, mm -hmm. they just have access to everything for free. Because really, we have two enrollments. We have the first enrollment, mm -hmm. and then we have an LRP enrollment. So every bit of education we do is designed to help people get on LRP. And then doTERRA pays us for that, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm just trying to imagine how do we combine the ladder to absolutely to, to get those new people in yeah and then continue adding value and where is that income coming from we know the doTERRA side comes from doTERRA yeah um it's all limited to your creativity and we have we actually give so much value for free in our teams um that sometimes the idea of us actually charging for things is new to us. And what you do a little bit different is you add your knowledge and creativity. Say Zosha, for example, could do uh, an oil class, but then specifically make it for um, you know, pain relief or take it further and do a mini course um, and bring in all of her skills. So maybe a mini course is you know, five, five classes, maybe a mini course is three weeks. Maybe she takes all of her online learning, like all of her learning online um, to a Z wellness membership section. So it, that's why I say it's really limited to your creativity is know your little genius, your circle of genius, um, why people are coming to you. And instead of us sitting in front of somebody and teaching, all you're doing is taking that knowledge and putting it online and just building a little classroom online or a course online. Um, you don't have to map out a whole course to begin with, mm. but knowing that the value that you're giving your audience is worth paying for. And that I think comes with confidence. So for me, for example, I have a couple of hats. So I, last year, when we first went into lockdown, I did a cookbook. And I thought, shall I offer the cookbook for free? And nothing to do with doTERRA at all. But I said, okay, um, I will do a cookbook and to harness my community because they're all disrupted and displaced and I didn't know where they went. And people that I'd known for 12, 15 years just overnight disappeared. And I thought this would be a really nice way to harness the community back together and they could have some maison moments at home. And so it went huge. But for me, I just wanted to learn how to build something online and then donate a chunk of the money to to um, Blue Dragon. So I learned the process of building it online. I learned the process of marketing to people. It had nothing to do with doTERRA. It had everything to do with my community though. So I thought that was a great way to nourish my community through a, a, a cookbook that was my customer's favorite recipes over the last 10 years. So take anything out of your life maybe it's long lashes maybe it's you know back pain you know how to remove a wart from your toe whatever it is you know there is a market for you out there and if you give enough value around that topic people will buy it because through entering in your front door they get to know you and like you and trust you and once they get that trust factor they will be happy to move to the next level and ascend your, your value ladder. Is that cool? Zosh? Yeah, I think what's interesting is when you've, you know, you've got your client base already, which we all do have some sort of thing like that, yeah. that then you start to, from talking to people and, and this seems to be then a very common theme. Like yeah. I, I find, that everyone, even without me trying very hard, everyone wants this particular thing here. So, you know, in the last two weeks, I've had a very clear message from people messaging me as to what direction I need to go. And, you know, I, I it may be in my head, I want to go over here because that's what I like doing. But actually, I see that's what the demand is. So actually that's what I need to do because then if that's what people want yeah. and then they're looking and searching online for some information from me and I don't have that information they'll go somewhere else um, even though I think that maybe this is me over here um, so yeah it's it's been a very interesting journey where I think oh actually 
And then through that, I will get to all the other things that I can offer. But at yep. the moment, the demand is here. So work on that and off make the offers up the ladder on this topic. Yeah, I think if it fits into your wheelhouse, like your skill and your interest and your passion, mm. absolutely. If it's so far left of field and you go, well, maybe they're actually not my customers after all, and maybe you know my friend down the road could actually serve them better, you could refer mm. them to that, that person. Um, it's kind of like uh, TripAdvisor reviews back in the day when they were really big. And I used to always go online and see how my restaurant was doing online. It can really, by listening to people's um, feedback, it can really skew how you manage your own business. So I decided about 10 years ago to not even look at TripAdvisor, not look at the reviews. Um, and that really helped me to build my own confidence and to really know the direction where I want to take my own business and to know deep in your soul where you want to take your business. But you need a plan. And this is all about having a plan on how to take your business online and where you want to take your people. So you know, by sitting with it and knowing your business and knowing yourself and your skills, what you can offer people. And maybe people coming into your life, they know where they want to get to because of their circle of radius. But you know far more because you're marketing to you five years ago. So you know that person coming in the door is you, a part of you. You know, they're on the same journey as what you took. So you can see far more than what they can see by, by your journey. So I think it's confidence of where you want to take them. Um, confidence through giving them value to show them that if they come with you and if they believe and trust you, you can take them on this journey. Yeah, there'll be some people coming in, they'll give you feedback and things you haven't thought about. So you will always need to retweak and, and, and put up a new video or a new photo. But that's the beautiful thing with online and having it built online. You can easily edit things. If one video isn't resonating with people, maybe the background is wrong. You know, maybe how you, uh, you put the, the pop-up window or the, uh, where you place the button is not working through feedback and you just get better and better and better. And if you go back and look at some of your first um, live videos that you did personally, compare them to how you're doing them now, you know, we just get better. And by showing up, you do, you just get better. So I think if we have the, the end game in mind, when we first start, we get overwhelmed too much. Um, you just learn through the process. So yeah, Zosh, I think uh, we just be open to people's feedback all the time. And maybe you do need to tweak it. Like yesterday, you said something amazing that you were doing um, uh, like rehabilitation classes and online classes to people in quarantine. And it was just, wow, that's such a huge market. And if you could actually uh, identify that market to begin with, a lot of people even wouldn't. And then bait that market and then hook them and bring them into your value ladder. And then once they're in and you offer them three days of free classes, and then after three days, you then offer them the other, they've got 14 days. So then you offer them the other, what's that, you know, 11 days, 12 days as, as a mini course, they've got to pay for those classes. There you go. You've already got that second level on, on your ladder. So things will always pop up in life that will be an opportunity for you to, to market to somebody. So this is all just instead of having a shop that people come into and they peruse through your shop and buy things, um, this is having your shop online and they see you online. And by being online, you can be open 24 seven. Yeah. Have I lost anybody? Let me go through the photos. <laughs> We're all okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's change over the slide here. So the value ladder is, when you create anything inside your value ladder, so anything means your voice, your offer, yeah? It's all focused on getting that result for those people through this process. So on every level, so when they come in the front door, so this is about your voice all the time, honing your voice. If the only thing you get out of today's lesson is I need to know who I'm talking to and where I'm gonna take them. And as I ascend them up the ladder, Let's give them more value. And that's the most important message today. Yeah. So when you create anything, when you 
create your voice and the photos, you just need to know what result you want to give those people. That'll really help to keep you focused. So if someone does not have a value ladder, they really don't have a business. All you're doing is really selling a product because that product is, okay, bringing someone in about sleep issues, you give them serenity, end of story, it's finished. What we wanna do in doTERRA is give people service and support and love and nourishment. That is what the value ladder is. It's absolutely perfect language for doTERRA. And that's why I was going, oh, wow, the light globe was like bing, 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 bing <laughs> when I was reading this because it's perfect for us in doTERRA. It's all about supporting our people and loving on them by just knowing where we're going to take them. Instead of selling a product, we're selling our love and our support. I was going to say our soul, but we're selling our love to our people and, and giving them. And that's what makes all of us completely different on this call. Because instead of just selling the same product, we're giving them our version of, of doTERRA. You know, it's completely different to everybody else. And that's why we can all succeed in this. So if you make a boring front end offer, your business will always struggle. I thought this was really funny. Um, make a sexy deal to attract into your front end of your funnel. Like give them a lot at the beginning. And you know, sexy doesn't mean sexy. Sexy just means like really attractive offer to that person. If it's sleep, make them a really great bait to get them in. And it's not about being corny or being, um, you know, sideshow alley stuff. It's about giving them real good quality um, offer at the beginning to bring them in. Because then they say, you know, if they're offering this at the beginning, um, and then where are they going to take me after that? It must be pretty good if, if I get something else later on. Or maybe it's going to take a while for them to get to the next level in your value ladder. But keep continually adding value, even if it's just once a month newsletter. Yeah. So let's move into the next slide. So this first section here is the, the ascension path. So more customers in your front end. So more customers coming in, a percentage will just naturally upgrade to a higher level of care. So they have been brought in because they have some interest and naturally they just want to be taken through and hear what else you've got to offer. So what kind of bait can you create to attract your customers in? So we talked about bait in the first week. So who are your customers? Where are they congregating? Where are they hanging out? And how do you bait them? How do you hook them in? So what kind of bait can you attract your, your customers in with? And if you keep adding more value, people will continually to spend more money if you keep working on them. And that's the thing, nurturing, nourishing them, um, and just with more value. So let's have a little break for a moment here. And I'm just gonna stop sharing the slide for a moment and take a, a breath. <laughs> are, we, are we doing okay? Yeah, so let's have a, a little bit of questions. And if you've got a question, let's unmute. Um, and I'm happy to answer anything at, at the moment. I was gonna make my screen a little bit bigger. I so, think it's brilliant, Pete, what you're sharing because it shows also you have this vision, but you have got to take the stepping stones because like going back to what Zosha was saying, okay, there's one big door that you can catch people, but there's lots of little doors and everybody's on a different level of that ladder. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the same when we look at our own prospects, yeah? You know exactly what product you can provide for them and the goodness you can provide, but they're not there yet, yeah? So you've got to keep doing this sharing, opening another door, showing them the value and all these different stages. And it's a, it's an ascension. I love that word when I read it. Yeah. <laughs> it's an ascension process that yeah. you've got to guide them, yeah? Absolutely. And that ascension shows to me too that they're growing. Yeah. Um, and maybe their result was only that they wanted to get a, a good night's sleep. But then through that, how many of us, you know, started with one issue in our lives with doTERRA in the beginning and look at where we are now, you know, we're spending 
our own time sitting here today because we want to learn more about how we can spread this wider to benefit more people. Yeah, of course, at the, there's a result that we will benefit more as well. Of course, we're business people. You need to, if this is a business, you need to make money. Yeah, and so our Friday course is all about strategy. Um, and so how can we add more value into our community and support our people more through that ascension path, you know, yes. with, with more value. You want to keep people in your community. This is all it's about. If we simplify all this down, and when you go back and look at this slide deck again, and when I was typing it out, I'm like, oh, it's, it's very wordy. And I don't want people to get stuck on the words. I want you to really visualize that ladder. And where are you going to take your people? You want to grow your community and love on them. Let's look at some big people in doTERRA. So let's look at um, a whole fit, Ange Peters. She has a massive community and she has a vision and a direction of where she wants to take her people. You don't want to bring your people through the front door into your house. Sit down, everybody. I'm going to talk to you about sleep. And then you walk out the side door and you've left them. So they're all in your front room of the house. And then they're like, okay, where do we go now? They're all lost. So you actually want to guide them and then show them onto the second floor of your house. And then on the second floor, you've got a party happening, but they've got to pay $2 to get into that party because there's more value at that party. Okay. This is how I see it. Yeah, it's simple, but that's how my brain works. <laughs> you know, you really want to take them on a beautiful journey with you and nurture them. So sit down with it, draw the ladder. This really worked for me. Draw that ladder and actually show the different levels on, on that ladder, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I hope that analogy worked. Yeah. Does anybody have any comments? Ali, you still with me? Tracy? I'm totally um, with you. My brain's just firing at a million miles an hour. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to just... Yeah, figure out. Mm. I haven't quite figured out how to make one value ladder that has current team and prospects in it. And maybe it's two ladders. Yeah, sure. Sure. I don't think there's a rule yet. Um, there's, there's not a rule about uh, how many funnels you can have and different types of funnels because the funnel is about getting a result for somebody. So what you want to sit down and, and work out is, okay, what can I offer people? And then there's different pain points and each funnel could be a different pain point. So already in doTERRA, we have work with me, business builders. You want to attract business builders. And then you also have your customers. So already you have two communities. <laughs> We're quite unique. And then within those two communities, there's different pain points. So it's really unlimited. But in the beginning, you want to simplify things down so that for yourself, you're, for your own personal business, it's not, you know, you don't get stuck and overwhelmed and think, oh, it's too big. And it's really not, believe me, if I can do it, honestly, anyone can do this. Really, really. Well, I'm also thinking, Pete, not everybody on, on this call has websites yet, mm. you know, just starting out or, but yeah. you, this still is valuable for how you're communicating on any social media, how you're communicating yeah. this in a class. You know, we could be talking about our value add Mm -hmm. you know, this ladder in ways, we can find ways to talk about this and bring yeah. people along in every conversation. Ab right? Absolutely, even face to face. That's right. Yeah, you start face to face, you know, have, have your, just know, even if it's only like, who am I attracting? Start there, because that's where I started. You know, a couple of years ago when I did, um, started with Deb in the Head, at the ICANN Institute, that's where we started. Avatar. I even had to Google the word avatar. I'm like, what does this mean? And so, you know, I'm only, I'm not many steps in front of you guys, you know, and then I'm like, ideal customer, you know, I just thought, get everybody, you know, bring them all in. They're all going to love me. Of course, they're not all going to love me. They don't all need me. And so the right people will love you. The right people will need you. And then you want to keep those right people needing and loving you because you take them on a journey. <laughs> what does Victoria say here? And Pete, that's where that's where I am at the moment. I don't have a website and the thought of having a website for me is just like way down the track. But being yeah. with Deb, um, but also 
just in this class, just in this session now, I've just realized I'm just getting people to the front door. Yeah, sure. Sure. And it's just trying to work out, you know, my ideal um, people that I want to attract. Mm. But I feel yeah. like I'm actually giving them too much right at the start. I right. like to give, 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 give. But now I've just realized now that I'm giving them too much and, and it's stopping right there. Yeah. So I need to work on that. And I think it's great that you have that awareness um, that and the confidence too, because I really believe it's confidence to go, okay, line in the sand. Um, I think that I'm worth, you know, putting a, a price tag on this. And mm. then you start to see who the serious people are. And there's going to be a lot of people coming in who want the free offer. And then if you offer something with a price tag on it, then you start and, and pretty close to when that first offer finishes, because then you take them on, they're looking for a result. Yeah. And so then you start to see the people who will actually buy something and not just the freeloaders. And there'll be a certain amount of people that just want to freeload on for a while. But well, I feel like I've got all the freeloaders. <laughs> Well, um, Tracy, I was actually just having a, um, actually it wasn't a, it was a back and forth on leaving messages conversation. Um, but I have a new builder who is very much like you, just like somebody asked me about digestion issues and she wants to send them to the Mayo Clinic. You know, like she wants, and I'm like, no, <laughs> like, you know, you have to have, like these little baby steps that keeps them coming back. Yeah. Right? Because if somebody says, oh, I've got digestive issues. If you're like, we need to reset your gut microbiome, you know, and we, you know, it's like, we have this girl that goes to Harvard and you can get on a phone call with her. You know, it's like, we're going from here and skipping all this value yeah. in between and also skipping the opportunity for them to learn to know, like, and trust you, right? So if somebody's like, I've got a digestive issue, then we should be like, oh my gosh, we have amazing oils and products for that. Mm. Let me give you a sample of digest then and send you an article. Mm. Right. And then you want to bait them to say, come back. And then you check up on them like mm. two or three days later, how'd that work for you? What'd you think of the article? Oh, you need more. Okay. Let me send you the science blog and mm. maybe a couple samples of Terrazyme. Yes. Right, and, and and you're building that, but if you give them everything all at once, you have no ladder. <laughs> You've got like a diving board that you just jumped off of. So yeah, so we really need to to not go straight to the top, but to take these little steps because that also lets them see that you're professional, reliable, resourceful. That there are a lot of resources, right? And and if you have if you have a website, you could have places on your website where you're like, hey, I have a class actually on this. Yeah. Here's the link. You can go watch it, you know, or whatever. Just have an arsenal. And I know we have to build this up over time, but as Pete said earlier, we collectively as a team have like a big enough arsenal to save the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, like you could Tracy say, oh, I saw Allie teach a class on and ping her and be like, hey, can I borrow? Can do you have a link to that class? Because like I have somebody who really like that's how we grow. But it's that relationship and doing those those steps up the ladder, like you said, Pete. Yeah. yeah definitely. This has been a def definite aha moment for me. Thank you. Fantastic. And, you know, when we talk about resources, I think um, Enroll Pro, unbelievable resource. And oh my gosh, I just said that today. The, the, the Cleanse and Restore drip campaign on Enroll Pro. Like maybe our ebook as a team with all of our videos on forest bathing and everything else is too much, but that drip campaign? Yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. I so, need to talk to you about Enroll Pro because I've registered mm. and I need Enroll Pro for dummies. <laughs> um, they have hey. a website and they do a training every Wednesday that they record and it's in the in the Facebook. Did I say website? That's because Pete's got me. But they have a Facebook page. I need to yeah. get those details. <laughs> yeah. um, and so for Ali, so 
Uh, I, you know, as GAC account holder, absolutely love uh, Enroll Pro. Um, yes, there's a lot of, it's mainly just English speaking countries. So Australia but and they Europe. Do, and, they do have Europe, but it's in English. And yeah. they have, don't they have Australia? Yeah, that's English, English as well. But English. they don't have China. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so Sorry. I still think there's a lot of value in there though. Um, and right. also what I really love about Enroll Pro is that there's a, a section that you can customize a drip in there. And a drip just means that you write the email and you maybe you can choose five days and you write the email and you build it into that, that drip. So day one, and you can choose if you want it day one or day five. And so that email will drip out to your customers. So I've used that a lot in, in Enroll Pro. I've written my own emails. For example, somebody just joining, I, day one, I send them the welcome email. Day two, I talk to them about healing hands. Day three, I talk to them about co-impact sourcing. So I have a drip feed for my, my customers coming in. So that's not built into Enroll Pro, the actual emails. So I just design it myself. So you don't need to have a really expensive hub. Right, you can customize with local products. Or yeah. customize. Ab yeah. You customize within Enroll Pro. Absolutely, and right. drop in the photos, attachments. And, and like really, honestly, this is a great point for those of you who haven't even stepped into a free yeah. website. Enroll Pro is like the baby step before. Now, I am super pushing for Laura Jacobs and Jasmine to have a conversation. But that could be a year down. That could be a year before anything actually happens. So Enroll Pro is fantastic. Um, and it's got a CRM in it as well. Yeah, it's very simple to use. Very, very simple. And maybe later in February, we can go through Enroll Pro in these Friday classes. Please, <laughs> um, please. So, I'll be there. Yeah, lovely. Today was not about, you know, overwhelm. It's just about showing you a vision and just understanding where you want to take your people to, how to love on your people, how to pour into them. Each of our communities here, looks like the Brady Bunch, each of our communities here is completely different. So have the confidence to know that you have value that you can give your people. And, and that's the thing. And then have confidence to know when to put a price tag on it. There's no rule. You make the rule yourself. You put the line in this thing. Kayla has her hand up. Yeah. I just had a question with, yeah. um, when you're getting your opt-in and you're like plugging people into your value and stuff, where, where would be a good spot for like sampling? Is this something you would like want to sample them before you're plugging them in or like at the end of an email sequence, like offer sending samples? I think we should, it, oh, great question. I think we should always follow the strategic plan of like a, if we're doing like oil sampling, we should always follow the same pattern. So before you start to educate, they need to have an oil experience in their own home. Yeah. And so just have that in mind when you build the funnel, then build the funnel around that general understanding. And so you, you don't want people to come in cold into like an education if they've never experienced the oils before, because they won't understand. Now, if you're doing it online, obviously it, it's, again, a little bit more tricky. So you need to be creative. But if you can always get an oil into people's hands before you start to educate them on the oils, you're going to get a much better result. Yeah. So if you don't get an oil on someone's hands, don't be surprised if it doesn't lead anywhere because you're not giving them the amount of value that you could give them. Yeah. <laughs> so Zosh, you're running away. Yeah, Thanks for joining. <laughs> so Kaya, did that help? Did that help to answer? Yes, thank you. And then, so say you do um, like a drip sequence about like cooking with, oil, or maybe not even with oils, but like, yeah. oh, a morning routine or something like that. And it you're just kind of broadening your spectrum of like yeah. getting people to know you. Yeah. Would maybe like offering a sample at the end of something like that to get them into oils or? Yeah, absolutely. I so what I would do at the end of, Every email, say if you're bringing them in, and this is exactly what I'm doing. So thank you for the great question. <laughs> so I bring them in, they don't know me, they don't like me, they don't trust me yet. So I bring them in and, and over five days, every single email has a link to my, um, my Facebook community. So maybe they'll click on that. It's also got a link to 
a, I'm trying to give them a lot of value. I've written an ebook, so they'll click on that. But at the end of five days, what I'm trying to do is get them onto a phone call with me or get them into a one-on-one -on -one with me so that we can have a discussion of where they want to go to in, in health coaching. Um, so before I take them into a mini course on essential oils, I definitely want to get them an essential oil experience. You know, they may be coming in from an area around the world where we can't send them an oil. We're pretty good with where we can cover these days, but there may be somewhere, um, Timbuktu, where we can't get an oil to them. So then you just need to be creative. But maybe that then needs to be a Zoom class where they, they get to see more value like one-on-one, -on -one. offer them a one-on-one -on -one coaching session instead. You can be creative if you can't get oils into their hands, if it's essential oils that we're talking about. You know, that's one of one of the funnels. Victoria, did you want to say anything on that one? No, you got it. Yeah. Um, be creative. You know, there's going to be times when we're online. You know, oils work great knee to knee, face to face, and we put oils on people's hands. We can't always be in that situation. But if as much as we can get an oil into their hands, yeah. Um, and if you can't, then just be creative and add extra value somewhere else. If people are expecting 100%, give them 120%. Just, just exceed their expectations. All that's, the that's the Lee Iacocca. Um, under promise and overperform. Absolutely. Yeah. In and also on the, on, the samples, on the samples thing, you know, I, I honestly, I think I, I built truly to blue diamond without sampling anybody. <laughs> so it's, it, it's awesome if you can, but don't get so hung up on it that you think you have somehow failed and can't move forward to the next step if you yeah. didn't, especially during these times. I mean, Allie, you were in China with me. Were we sampling? No, ma'am. I don't remember ever, ever sampling. I think it was uh -uh. like I couldn't I couldn't place an order on Taobao to get the little things and I didn't want to bother my friends. So I was like, ah, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> if you want a sample of the oils, come to my class and you can pour them out of the bottle right into your hand. <laughs> I remember teaching my first, I think, three or four classes and my oils hadn't even arrived. And so I hadn't even tried the oils. And I was doing my first um, uh, healing hands project. And so, and I had people joining up and I think their oils arrived before my oils arrived. And, and so there's ways that you can actually do it. And so through the passion, through the love, um, you can go in. Enthusiasm goes a long way. <laughs> exactly. Look at where we are. Ignorance on fire, baby. Ignorance on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't go back and look at some of my first videos. And, and, and <laughs> so lovely to have you all here on Friday and Thursday evenings. Thanks for your time. Um, and I will see you. We're back next week. Next week is just going to be a wrap up of everything that we've talked about this week. And then we'll go into February and and have a different topic about being the enroll grow. Absolutely. I think it's a great topic. It's a really affordable way. I would to bet, I would bet I might be able to get a special guest, maybe. If she would be in the world. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That'd be exciting. Maybe. I could ask. That'd be great. What's <laughs> the best thing that could happen if you ask? She might say yes. And exactly. If I don't ask for sure, it'll be a no. <laughs> exactly. Let's do it. And if I do ask, I know she won't hit me. So <laughs> who cares? <laughs> Never been hit for asking anything. So. <laughs> everybody enjoy your evening enjoy your oh my day. gosh so much value thank you so so much Pleasure. Mm -hmm. I love, it. love seeing all your faces thanks, thanks pete hi everybody bye everyone uh, like third level wrong here pete she charged <laughs> it. bye thank you looking forward to seeing it bye.